It's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Drum Rolls with Scotty Irvin. Scotty's composed a list of 20 influenced songs for us today. Scotty, tell us how you came up with your list. Uh, just tried to pick the songs that, or maybe in some cases, the artist who I felt had the most impact on me. And I'm happy to say it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be to begin with. I actually had to leave a few people off. I put on my my own personal list what i called honorable mentions but Mm -hmm. (laughs) no time for those (laughs) anyway well on to the list the spinners one of a kind love affair yes this is what uh, i call a subconscious influence meaning that uh, this was a group i was very uh, fond of long before i ever picked up the first drumstick Um, this particular song is in a basic 4-4 rhythm but uh, it's not played as a basic 4-4 four, four rhythm. It's, it's still, it still has a very danceable beat to it, but it's not played in the same sense as just normal common time. Mm-hmm. Common time meaning like, let's say, for instance, this is a bass drum and snare drum. Boom, 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 boom. One of a kind love affair has a beat that's a bit more like dun 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 a little bit a little bit more lively, and I, I think I picked up on that. I think that's one thing you can say about four four uh, drum beats. There are certain people who play them, and there are certain people who play with them. Mm-hmm. I think the drummer on the Spinner song was playing with, mm-hmm. not against, with. Mm-hmm. This is the Spinner song, one of a kind love affair. I'll give first off. I'm going to give a basic four four rhythm, and then more along the lines of the rhythm that's used in the Spinner song. Here's the four four rhythm. And then how the Spinner song kind of has it. How young were you when you started being on stuff? Well, actually, as far as the uh, um, uh, drumming influence, I didn't actually start playing until 1979, but... Mm -hmm. uh, during the time that the Spinners and you mentioned Three Dog Night, they're coming up in a moment. Um, <laughs> around the time that they were popular, I was in kindergarten, first grade. This was in 73, 74. So several years before um, the major major undertaking was about to take place, um, I had just like a, a toy snare drum and later on a toy drum set. One of those with the paper drum heads. To this day, I'm still not sure why they make those with paper made those with paper <laughs> drum heads. They obviously didn't make, make them for someone to play on, I guess, mm-hmm. but um, I would attempt to duplicate sounds on those just as sort of just a way to keep myself amused. But mm-hmm. um, when I actually got behind a real set of drums many, many years later, it, it, it occurred to me some of the things that I thought you, you played on one piece of the drum set you actually didn't. So mm-hmm. that was sort of a eye-opening experience getting behind a real drum set and saying, wait a minute, everything I've learned is you know wrong. It's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Drum Rolls with Scotty Irvin, Three Dog Night, Family of Man. Yet another subconscious influence, another one before I actually started playing drums. The cymbal uh, rhythm on this one is uh, it's a bit more syncopated along with the uh, standard 4-4 beat that's being played in the background. Three Dog Night song, Family of Man, with the uh, broken up beat that I was talking about with the uh, accents on the, well, it's going to be on the hi-hat on this, but on the riot symbol. Mm-hmm. During the... Uh for lack of a better word, it's not really the chorus, but it sort of uh, um, holds itself uh, as a chorus, I suppose, where the band members or the singers are going, do 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 Sing along if you'd like. Hey. <laughs> Sing better than me, I'm sure. Um, in the background, the cymbal is not playing on the one and the three. Mm-hmm. It's playing on the two and the four. It's actually not playing along with the bass drum and the snare drum. Again, we have the bass drum and the snare drum going, doom, doom. Dun, 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 dun. If you add one more beat, one more beat to it, you have the cymbal playing sort of against it. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd almost have to play that for you for, to, for you to really understand it. Or better yet, we'll let the real example come into play. Listen carefully at how much louder <laughs> the cymbal is when it's not playing with the bass drum and the snare drum on this part. Uh, it's Brainwash with Dr. Tom and Drum Rolls with Scotty Irvin. ACDC Girls Got Rhythm. Well, so much for the subconscious influences. Now we're on to some that actually really occurred while I was playing. Um, Before ACDC came into my life, I'd actually been to a couple of concerts, namely Elvis. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ronnie Tutt was the drummer with him. He is uh, currently playing with Neil Diamond, I believe. 
anyway, uh, I remember focusing on him a great deal during the show and thinking, that looks like fun, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And years later, of course, I I think some of that same image uh, imagery may have popped into my head. I began playing snare drum uh, in the marching, or rather the uh, uh, sixth grade band in September of 79. Mm -hmm. Played for several months. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't something I really thought that much about. Mm -hmm. Um, I have an uncle by the name of Jay Stanley. I have to give him some credit here. He he, he would play several different uh, songs and things from different bands that I'd never heard at the time or not really heard. And some of the bands, Leonard Skinner was one band. some other uh, rock-oriented stuff. He liked Bob Seger, and I heard several things from him with with all that, Ted Nugent, people like that. I had never really heard anything that was really that outlandish from my previous influences. Mm -hmm. Then one day I walked into his room, and he was listening to ACDC. Now, remember, I didn't know what ACDC sounded like. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. The first thing I thought was the guitar sounded like they were so raw they were going to start bleeding on the floor any second <laughs> the drums were much louder mm-hmm. than any previous recording i heard at that point and i didn't focus on the fact at the time but phil rudd was just playing a basic 4-4 beat mm-hmm. but it sounded like he was coming out of uh of a, of a cave or something like that i mean yeah, it was that may have may have something more to do with mutt lang's production on the uh, album mm-hmm. Mutt would have success with them uh, for several years another thing that really struck with me was the uh well, let's just say non-conventional vocals of uh, a certain Bon Scott, who at the time I heard this was already dead, but I had no idea of it. Mm-hmm. So you got all this, uh, you know, for, for lack of a better word, uh, raw rock sound coming out, and on top of it, I've been around the world! I remember thinking, what is this guy, you know? <laughs> part of me was thinking, should you be liking this? And another part of me was saying, oh, yes, you should be liking this. <laughs> My uh, parents were a little bit... Uh, Shocked at first, but the funny thing is, now they know the songs and you kind of sing along with them, too. Ah, funny how times change. But uh, I can honestly say it is very, very clear to me, musically speaking, not spiritually, lyrically, any of that, Mm -hmm. but musically speaking, if there were no ACDC, there would be no Scotty Irving. (laughs) Right. Simple as that. Good deal. 